Is the Democratic Alliance ready for top-level change, or will the status quo remain? The official opposition votes in new leadership at its elective Congress this weekend. Current leader John Steenhuisen takes on former Joburg Mayor Mpo Palazzi for party president. With the 2024 elections looming, it's a crucial weekend to ensure the right leadership and policies are decided on. Let's unpack this further with political analyst Sanusha Naidu. Sanusha, thank you as always uh, for your time. Um, now, on the DA's website, uh, they claim their elective conference this weekend is the most important political event ahead of the 2024 general election. And I'm quoting here, in South Africa's current political circumstance, the DA is now South Africa's government in waiting. How significant would you say the outcome of this conference is in the broader scheme of things? Because it seems like a little bit more of the same. Good evening, Anneli, and good evening to the viewers. I think for the DA, it's, it's definitely something that they feel gives them a, 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 a reasonable, if not beyond a reasonable chance, to make it into government. And I think they're banking on the fact that you're looking at the polls and they're looking at the uh, surveys that are coming in. And one of the things that they do is they do a lot of internal polling for themselves. And they see the difference between themselves and the ANC at next year's election around 11%. Mm -hmm. And for them, I think that's a big, a big, a big gap that they can actually uh, manage with in terms of it's not massive in, in, in the context of where they were in 2019. Is it realistic? Um, I think in terms of where we see ourselves in the context of political fluidity of our, our landscape, our body politic of the state, and I think in the context of the increasing fracturing of the party, of the ANC, the internal governance, uh, malfeasance, etc., all of those deficits that you're beginning to see um, become a tipping point if going beyond the tipping point in the party, um, and even the lack of, 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 what, of, of, of direction in terms of where we are in, in terms of um, the democracy, I think it gives most political parties on the opposite side of the ANC in parliament and those that want to create a political party um, that we just saw yesterday, one uh, being formed, um, the kind of perception that this is where they are. And I think with smaller political parties, as we see what's going on in coalitions, they begin to find that, that kind of um, renewal for themselves, that they play a critical role, particularly when it comes to coalition. And I think the statement is that the more the implosion of the ANC takes place, there's a sense that we can step into that void. Unfortunately, I think you've also got to read the room and read the political landscape. It also depends on what voter turnout would be like. And there were, there were polls that were done that seem to suggest that, from my interpretation, that if there's a higher voter turnout, the ANC seems to do uh, not so well. But if it's a lower voter turnout, they tend to move beyond that threshold of 50%. Um, marginally. So I think you've got to also be careful in terms of um, how you interpret the poll in terms of the voter turnout and, of course, mm -hmm. registered voters and people who come out to vote and how much of that education filters into the electoral strategy that we see most of the political parties t taking on now as they move into the 2024 election season. Of course, the, the top uh, leadership position within the DA at these kind of conferences gets a lot of uh, media attention. That seems to be what we focus on. Uh, do you think the person occupying that role makes a significant difference to the direction the party will take or even to something like voter turnout? Do you think more people uh, would go to to make their mark if you know, John Steenhuisen was at the helm of the DA than, for instance, in Paul Palazzi? It depends how you actually relate to the leadership of the party. I think it also, in, in, in the context of how you interpret the leadership. So she, um, Dr. Palazzo, will probably have her constituencies that kind of resonate with her. Mr. Stenhazen will likely also have his constituencies that will resonate with him and the party politics, and also more broadly with what they see as the identity of the party. I think that's where the, the some of the that the, the internal dynamics lie within the DA in terms of how much is it going to actually move its footprint beyond um, the kind of electoral base that it had in 2019. And most importantly, in the context of now moving into those spaces where the electorate is feeling frustrated, apathetic, they don't want to vote, they don't feel the vote actually has any meaningful impact for their lives or their livelihoods, and so they stay away from the polls. But if they're staying away from the polls, that means that they're not seeing an alternative 
to whether they were a, a loyalist voter to the ANC or they were a loyalist voter to any other political party, are they moving that vote to another political party? And I think that's where the DA actually has to, to, to consider what are some of the um, strategic imperatives that they have to do on the ground in terms of bringing that vote into that space that they want to um, have a comfortable kind of electoral uh, footprint in. And, and, and it sometimes it becomes a little bit less than just, you know, people must do the right thing and do the, and vote and, and, and we will basically, you know, the more you vote, the more you're exercising your democratic right. It's much more than that. It's also about understanding the policy arena, understanding the electoral system, because the electoral system can also be quite unrealistic and masks a lot of the, um, the, the challenges that are inherently uh, prevalent in our electoral uh, uh, in our electoral processes. So, for instance, if you are on a PR, we are on a PR system. That means that we're not really voting for the leader of a political party to be the president of the country. We're voting for the party, and the party then will have to go through the dynamics of how it then uh, unfolds in, in in the parliament. And I think this is where the electoral reform and and looking at what the the, the, the parliament will move forward in terms of the electoral reform with independent candidates and so forth, how that plays out. Because again, I think that there are missed opportunities within the whole space. And I think this is where the DA also becomes frustrated. So leadership personalities do matter in politics, but at the same time, their appeal may not also extend beyond where their constituency. And they hmm. also have to navigate the terrain. So on the website, um, it also describes the Congress as the most exciting and unifying event for the entire party. And we've seen uh, the DA as a party with significant internal div divisions over the past two years, an exodus of uh, African leaders. Some of those who have left the DA are now the independent candidates that you have mentioned in your previous answer uh, that will be going up against whoever leads uh, the, the DA. Um, do you see a more unified future for the DA anywhere close, given that we still see those racial dynamics playing out at the very top levels? I think it is a inherent challenge for the DA in going forward, um, not just only within the party, but also in the broader electoral landscape. I think most political parties in the current context of where they find themselves are actually in a, a bit of a, an entangled within their internal politics. And I think to a large extent, that's also because they're also trying to figure out where it is that they're going in terms of coalition politics. And we've seen what the experience has been in uh, Gauteng in terms of the fluidity, but the unpredictability of coalitions. And I think that's going to be key as well for how the party defines itself and or any political party that then takes itself forward beyond 2024 in the context of coalition agreements and partnerships and strategy. And that's something that has to then translate into how you in, in, in embed this and, and uh, bring it into your election strategy for next year. Because I think this is, a, this is an area that is muted and it's one that needs a lot of attention in, in going forward with civic participation, democratic edu uh, voter education and so forth. Because coalitions have become almost this this frightening thought at times that you can actually have the situation that we saw in Shwane without a mayor for so many weeks. And then, of course, we also see the, the, the undermining of these coalition uh, arrangements and um, uh, partnerships. So I think to a large extent, that's something that will also play into how you address some of your internal dynamics, uh, whether it's representation, whether it's about ideology, it's about whether you're speaking in a cohesive, coherent voice or uh, others having a different interpretation of the ideology you are pr proposing. These are all kind of hmm. key points, not just for the DA, but I think across the political spectrum for all political parties, where their relevance is also one that they have to think about beyond just the normal kind of uh, a reactive approach to electoral democracies. So it's not just a leadership conference. There all, will also be important policy decisions. Uh, is there anything specific you're going to be keeping your eye on to see whether the DA addresses it and changes their position, perhaps? Well, I think, you know, there's been talk, uh, or rather there's been reports that the DA hasn't really come out very clearly on black economic empowerment. Um, I think it, it, one of the things that the DA would be giving a lot of attention to is a meritocracy approach to policy making and of course in, 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 in within that space how do you integrate that meritocracy 
the role of efficiency and what a capable state should look like and what does this mean in the context of policy making. It's, it's going to be interesting to see because one of the things that um, was mentioned um, was looking at the, Cape, at, 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 at the way in which the day um, performs in the Western Cape and in particular in the Cape Town Metro and of course how that feel, fuels in the context of the, um, the image, the reputation and so forth and whether those policies would come out um, in terms of a much broader national footprint that the DA will put forward with regard to its electricity genera uh, electricity approach, um, uh, issues, how it's moving towards getting the uh, procurement uh, and agreement from Treasury around um, uh, selling back to the city with regard to ex um, independent power producers, both customers that are living in dwellings as well as um, businesses. So there's a, there's a bit of an interesting overlap to see that coherence between the two spaces. Just one last point on the DA as well in terms of its electoral footprint. You know, one of the things I think is going to be also important to see is how much of their of their vote happens at the national level and how much of their vote actually coalesces at the provincial level. One of the things that we did pick up in the 2019 election was people or, or, or voters actually seeing the DA much more within the context of the province, even though they, they dropped in, in, in terms of their performance and their percentage, but they still nevertheless were quite uh, comfortable in, in retaining the province. And that's going to be key. So the key point to make is you know, what is the vote in terms of voting for the DA as that government in waiting, as they say, um, ready to take the control of the na of, 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 of power at the national level? Or is it going to be more about people feeling comfortable that the DA kind of works within the Western Cape as a government in power? Thank you so much uh, for your insights. As always, uh, political analyst Sanusha Naidu talking to us uh, in the run-up to the DA's uh, elective conference taking place tomorrow and on Sunday.